In .NET, if you want to run a block of code on a timer, you might be a little confused since there are at least five versions of a timer class in .NET. Well, now in .NET 6, there's actually a sixth version. Let's mash on that. Go. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the five, maybe six, different versions of timers. I guess we're just going to focus really on the new one, right? We are. We're going to talk a little bit about the old one just to see what it is that, why it is that there is a new one in the first place. Uh, but there is this hilarious nine-year-old uh, question asked on Stack Overflow. Why are there five versions of the timer class in .NET? And uh, I'm not going to get into the details of why, but each one is kind of a product of its own time. And some of them are specific to web forms, some to wind forms. Um, and some are for raising events and others are for just like running a, a callback kind of thing. So there's just, there's lots of different ways. It's a bit confusing, uh, but let's just dive into a, a new .NET 6 app and we're gonna gonna play around with kind of the, the standard threading.timer and then the new, what's called periodic timer that was introduced in .NET 6. So I'm just gonna do a .NET new console here. Create a new console app called fun with timers. And I'm going to pull that over to the right monitor so that you can all see it too. Mm. Okay. Failed to save. Okay. Don't save it then. I don't know why I did that. Looks um, exactly the same. <laughs> it really is. Okay. So console, right line, hello world. Uh, let's say that we wanted to uh, write some code that ran every second and just output the current time isn't really important what we're like doing in there. Clock. And then what's that? So that would be like a clock. Then. Sort of like a clock that updated mm -hmm. every second. Um, and then after 10 seconds, we just want it to stop. So if we did that using uh, a timer, there's something in system.threading called timer that's existed for a very long time now in .NET. And it requires like five different things to, to kick it off, basically. Uh, you have to give it a timer callback, uh, which is a delegate, just like some method that it's going to call. Uh, and then we have to give it some state, and then we tell it when to start it, like after a certain delay, and then the period that you want it to, to get called again um, periodically um, as, the, as it continues to go. So uh, right off the bat, it's a little bit confusing, but let's just Let's just write this for the sake of writing it so that we see what it looks like. So the first thing we need to do is like pass in some kind of state. So we're going to have to create a class called timer state here. And I'm just going to have a counter on there because I want to know how many times it's count it's gone by. So I'm just going to have a plug at the end of count here. So there's my state. I'm going to say var timer state equals new timer state. And I'm going to pass that in as my second argument. So that's my timer state. And the first thing that we pass in there is a callback. So I'm just going to do a, a Lambda function here that is the thing that it calls. Uh, it accepts a state. And we'll go back to the implementation of that method in a minute here. But this is the thing that gets called. And uh, the next thing is the do times, the amount of time for the first time that it gets called. Uh, so we can do that using a time span. Let's say from seconds, I want it to wait a second before it starts, and then I want it to run every uh, 10 seconds after that. Or sorry, every second after that. Did I get that, that right? Yeah, so doesn't that take integers? So there's overloads for it that take uh, all okay. the different things. So it should have a... Oh, it does have time spirits here, right? Yeah. I know. Let me see here. Okay. I think that's where it was maybe getting confused. OK, ah, so okay. then we have inside the timer, if I want to access that state, the state actually gets passed in as just an object. So that's a little bit weird right off the bat, uh, but 
now what I'm going to do is say bar inner state <laughs> equals timer state. Like I have to cast it to the right type because oh, I wrote the code. I know what kind it's supposed to be. From a long time ago before we had it. It is. Yeah. yeah so this okay. has existed for a long time which is why it's a little bit weird because there were certain features of the language that didn't exist at the time when it was created. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I'm going to do is say if uh, count is great. Yeah, if timer inner, state dot count inner state, inner state yeah. dot count is greater than ten, then I'm going to what was I going to do here? Cancel the timer. Oh no, sorry. I I just want to increment it, and then in here I'm just going to say console dot right line okay. uh, date time dot. So the canceling we'll get to in a second here, but let's just see if we can run this thing. So I'm gonna my console again. I'm gonna do dot net run. And it just kind of runs and exits, which is weird. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's because we didn't ever tell it to wait on the timer inside our main method here. <laughs> uh, so what this is where things get even more weird. So my logic for like canceling this and waiting for it to finish is that I need to inspect that timer state. I'm going to say if the count is less than 10, then here I want to await past. I'm just going to like wait a little while and then check it again and see if it's um, gotten to that point where it's done. And then I'm going to say my timer dot dispose at the very end. And then I'll say console right line all done. So now it should wait at least until it's done. And let's give that a try. Ooh, it's already feels awkward. Doesn't it? Yeah. But here's my fancy looking clock, finally. But isn't that super awkward, the code that we just wrote? Mm -hmm. I'm also a little bit curious to see if it's actually going to cancel the right time. I think it did. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it did get through 10, but I, I feel like there is a a potential timing issue that is on the combination of when you do the task delays. And yep, timers. for sure. I could reduce the delay here, but then I'm kind of spinning Ooh. CPU cycles, right? Which you don't have that sort great. of CPU cycle to spare. Okay, so this code is weird. Let's just get rid of it um, and see what this looks like in the new world. So in the new world, uh, what we have is a timer called periodic timer. Okay. And it only takes one, uh, one parameter here, and that's the, the interval of time between invocations of the callback. So uh, I'm just going to say time span that from seconds one. So I want it to run every 10 seconds, mm -hmm. or every one second. Uh, I'm going to have my state, which is my count. It's just going to be defined as a variable here. And then uh, basically, I can just use this by calling await timer.wait for next tick async. Bit of a long method name, but that's fine. And then the code that I want to run, I can just put inside my while loop. So here I can say my console.write line, datetime.now, which I'm just going to copy. And uh, I can say count plus plus. And that's it for my timer. So the code inside the while loop is the code that I want to run. And then I just have a while. Um, a while statement here saying you know, wait for the next tick in on my timer. And if I want to stop the timer, I can just say if count now is greater than 10, then I can say timer by dispose. And the, the dispose, if I look at the IntelliSense there, it says stop the timer and release any associated managed resources. So it's going to stop mm -hmm. the timer. And then the next time I call wait for next tick async, it's going to return false and it will exit my loop. And then it will be all done. Let's give that a run now and see what it looks like. Seems to be working. It does. We're done. Yeah, cool. I was a little bit nervous uh, with your time to dispose that we were, it feels weird. Um, yeah, but like we were on line here. seven, we were invoking a method on a disposed object. Yeah, that is strange. It feels a little bit weird. Um, 
I don't know what managed resources or on what resource it is that it needs to release. I kind of would have expected this to stop there. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not, does it. I don't know. It just feels like we're kind of abusing I disposable a little, that, but but no, oh, I'll take it. And the other, the only other thing to note here is that if you needed to cancel this, like send a cancellation signal from yeah. elsewhere in your mm -hmm. application, you can pass in a cancellation token here, That's and when nice. you when you signal that cancellation, it would stop the timer, and then uh, things would stop running. So. Mm -hmm. It's a nice concise way to do timers now that uh, kind of has that native async support in there. Although a lot of those other timer implementations didn't, where they predate async and they predate generics and they predate a lot of things. So um, this is a nice little improvement to, to the API that gives us another option. Amazing. All right, I love it. Okay, well. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.